The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everybody. My name is Ted, and today I'm going to be talking about the Cloud Forest Lodge in Ecuador. I've just returned from this place a couple of weeks ago. I had the pleasure of um, um, joining a fam tour to Ecuador, which included Mushby Lodge, Quito, and Galapagos, which will be the next topic. Um, today, I'm just going to tell you and show you some slides about this um, wonderful uh, lodge in the western side of the Andes in Ecuador. But I first have to check to see if you can hear me. Can we have a couple of hands up, please? Is that what I say? I'm learning about all this. One, two, thank you, thank you. Oh, great, thanks for that. Um, so this particular lodge is um, about three hours drive from Quito on the western side. So um, Ecuador, one of our favorite places, is um, got a high altiplano. The, uh, the high Andes and the, this area is known as the Valley of the Volcanoes. So on, on the far east is the, um, the Amazon jungle, and on the western side is a cloud forest and then down to the coastline. So this particular lodge is situated, as I said, at about three hours uh, drive. It took two hours on paved road, and then the last hour was on the very narrow uh, mountain road and uh, unmade and very um, bouncy, or what we call a massage sort of a type of ride. Um, so it's it's in this area approximately over here. And uh, last time I was here was about 30 odd years ago and we visited the Colorado Indians in a different area, but it was still a cloud forest. And all this is, this is a, a brand new lodge um, in the middle of nowhere, so to speak, and it was just a great experience. It was offered to us by uh, Metropolitan, our um, tour operator that we've used for over 30 years, and I was celebrating 65 years of um, running businesses. They were a DMC, and now they're into also owning properties. They own three boats out into the Galapagos, the Santa Cruz, La Pinta, and the Isabella, Finch Bay Hotel, this particular lodge, and the Gun a beautiful Gungatana Hotel in the um, Quito. So we had the pleasure of um, being there at theirs. So the cloud forest on the western side, just to give you an idea, as opposed to the Amazon rainforest, consists of all these uh, amazing uh, plants and biodiversity and bird life, bird, bird is paradise, if you like. But just to give you, a, what, you know, the, the size of, of the country is when people ask me what do I like in uh, South America, and I often say that the small countries of Ecuador and Guatemala, and that's the reason because you just the, the, the amazing diversity in a very small area. Um, and for example, they've got something like 1,500 species of birds. Um, the strides of Australia, we've got 800, just to, just to let you know. So in this particular reserve only, there's about 1,300 um, hectares it's a private reserve by, owned by the Mushby Lodge people. They have 400 species of birds that have been identified so far, to give you an idea. And of course, the diversity is um, we did, uh, we had two nights there and we did a few day walks and, um, and even sort of walks. And from frogs and cats and snakes, which you didn't see any monkeys, of course, uh, and an amazing bird life. Now, I have to tell you about this particular bird of, uh, butterfly. This is the one that uh, has a when it opens its wing, it's very uh, it's very blue iridescent. It's called the um, owl butterfly because of the I'm um, sorry uh, because of the eye here, and it's developed over a hundred years. And it's a, and it's protecting itself against predators. And the other thing you have to watch, have a look at this area here, and it's actually like a snake, and that's to ward off its predators. So you can see the little lies and then that the thing. And this is taking you know, hundreds, evidently, years and years to evolve. And that's how it protect, protects itself against any predators, which are, are, are birds and um, other little animals along the ground type of thing. So that, that's something unique to this particular area. They have two or three um, uh, areas where you can go out and do bird watching, of course, and there's trails and particularly in the morning uh, and the evening when the birds come in and out. But this particular place is called a um, the life centre and there's a little laboratory for butterflies there. So we just sat there and, and the guides picked out the, the birds and these little guys are called the toucanets. So they're, they're a smaller version of a toucan. 
So you can see a couple of there, and there's about five of them that uh, came out on the um, on the, the to get the banana, have a go at the bananas. And then amongst them, there were a whole lot of other little birds that kept coming and going, and the colours were just magnificent. Um, these are not my shots. I, I don't take. I don't have that camera. That's good. But the guides found these sorts of birds out in the forest, and we, we we you needed binoculars to see this. So it's a bird. Bird lovers' paradise, uh, just to see some of this. The lodge itself, as I said, it take, uh, took about three hours to get here, and the last hours on this horrible road. I had no idea how they uh, got here and built it. It was a bit of flat, the only bit of flat land here, and it was used for logging. So there's a story of biodiversity and preserving the, the local um, environment. So the, the, the the, it's set on the uh, top of this little mountain, if you like, and on either side, it just vertically goes down into to the river bottoms of, of the uh, surrounding. So there's lots of hills and, and mountains here. But they found this little bit of flat spot, so it was an old logging mill, and they converted this into a, a magnificent lodge. It's a five-star lodge. Uh, the facilities are amazing, and the guides and the food and everything is just fantastic. They've also built this thing called the Dragonfly, would you believe? And it took something like um, five years to buy. I've got no idea how they constructed this. It's made up of um, about four uh, gondolas. Uh, it takes about 30, 40 minutes um, to go around, um, about two kilometres, and you go through trees, above the trees, below the trees. So it gives you this bird's eye view of the canopy and the tree and the foliage and the um, oh, there's all sorts of flowers and orchids and bromeliads up, up up the top and there's also looking down um, just a beautiful uh, ride of uh, four or five people in the uh, in the gondola itself and um, with um, expert guides all the time uh, coming through and it's just a nice way of sort of having a look and, and riding through the uh, the kind of the canopies and the other thing they they uh, Brought up also was a sky bike they built, and this particular sky bike takes a, a couple of hours. You, you, it's called an air bike if you like, and anything up to ten or twenty minutes. And I, I one of the pedaling things, and again you're just riding very quietly through and observing and looking through the canopies, and uh, it's just a completely different version of because there's everything else is obviously on the the, the river flat. Uh, uh, bottoms and we look down into and there's all sorts of trails and as we were riding over here we saw some of our other friends uh, who were walking doing the trails they've got an amazing observatory tower which is quite high um something like 85 what was it about um, 85 feet or something high and they get, so bird lovers terrific just have a look at the the terrain so this is surrounding the whole this as i said the 1300 hectares of uh um, and how they built these things is beyond me. But just a quite unique place. So the the life center, as I mentioned, where we found this amazing butterfly, and have a look at that there again, the out butterfly. Um, bird watching, of course. There's a little humming center, a humming a hummingbird uh, uh, something uh, area, and they've got something like um, where there's three thirty five endemic to this uh, particular area. So there's all sorts of amazing statistics of the, the bird life, plants, insects, animals, and the biodiversity. So you're just sitting there and observing these birds coming in. The trails work from easy, and that's what I did. I did the easy ones under this sort of rough stuff for me. And the um, and and they, they the expert guides through, and because it's just straight up and down the, the side of the mountain, just slipping and sliding. They provide gum boots and where obviously and they I don't know how they find the the, uh, the bird life or the animals or the insects and they point out all these things it, it really is uh, so you can have very um, difficult walks and very easy walks and um, and also the like the bike ride is an easy way of sort of having a look at another way so as these people were walking through the trials uh, on the gondola that we were riding and we were looking down and uh, Watching them sort of um, carrying on, all waving to each other, so it's quite spectacular. Beautiful waterfalls around the place where you can actually go in and have a little dip. And this is um, me about uh, start the um, the bike ride, 
This is Carlos. Uh, he's the head um, guide. And it was an interesting interview I had with him because he, he's telling me that before they even got into this area, they sent him to do his PhD. And he camped in this area looking for places where there's going to be the best bird watching spots and the um, uh, creating trails. And he just loved that. He just camped with a backpack and a tent. Um, I don't know how he survived. And now he's the head um, guide here. Uh, and still developing, uh, evolving and, and things. And what they did is the um, one of the trials actually, uh, the trek started off um, at three o'clock in the morning, would you believe? By the time I got to breakfast, all these good people came back about four hours later, completely covered in mud. And they went out to have a look at the bird called the Cock of the Rock. And, and it's in a unique particular place in this area. But it took them that long and, and the trial was just uh, disgusting, but it was just one of the best experiences they've had. So um, Carlos um, developed and found this particular place where this is the only uh, place you can see the Cock of the Rock. This is a group of, uh, as I said, it was a fam tour that we did uh, where we visited this, this uh, the cruise, which I'll talk about in a couple of weeks' time, and the hotel. So it was a really lovely, great guides and great facilities. And the beauty is that they employ the locals. So if this didn't happen, if they didn't build this Mashby Lodge or take over, it would have been a logging mill or continued on and they would have been destroying the place. And uh, so it's a sort of a conservation thing that hunters and loggers. Now the locals are learning how to uh, preserve, conserve their, their areas. They invite kids up to the, have camps here and they introduce them to, um, to, to the, uh, the wildlife. So at the end of the day, whether you do a, a hard walk, an easy walk, or just sit back and watch the hummingbirds, um, they provide little picnic tables out in the walks. You come back to this magnificent lodge and you know, ceiling to floor windows, um, great restaurant, as I said, great food, and the rooms are amazing. Um, they've got blinds, of course, but you can wake up to this sort of scenery. Each room, there's 22 of them, um, have this sort of view. Uh, straight out into the jungle forest, uh, cloud forest. And, just, and in the morning, of course, the birds wake up and they're their alarm um, clocks and the, just a pleasant way of sort of waking up. There's a laboratory there. See, that, that butterfly I showed you before, that's it there uh, on the other side of the blue iridescent. So it was the owl butterfly with the, the, um, protecting it, the snake and the, um, the big owl eye. A um, nice library, uh, relaxing during the day or the afternoon. And then just at the end of the day, just a beautiful place. It's a cloud forest. There's always a little bit of rain and you come prepared for that. And, and it literally is in the middle of nowhere. So it's a beautiful uh, place. Um, there's activities like yoga. They've got uh, quite a small um, gym there also. If you want to pedal on a bike, uh, just relax and uh, enjoy the place. Great food, great presentations, great talks. Um, and of course, um, great wines that uh, we, we enjoy. So that's Mushby Lodge, and that's just one of the many um, pro, um, uh, products that we have uh, to offer to your clients. So from bird watching in Patagonia, all the way into the Amazon and uh, Ecuador, and the Amazon on this side, and the rainforest on that side. So we can do all that sort of thing. Why book with us? Because we've been doing it since 1975. Uh, my first visit there was in '75 uh, when I drove overland camping tours. All our staff have been to Ecuador. Um, we, we love doing what we do, and we only do South America and nothing else. Uh, Mexico, Cuba, uh, a little bit of the Caribbean, Cuba, uh, of course, um, South and Central America. And, and we, we love enjoying it, especially when the clients come back and they say they had a great time. I just, I just got back... Um, I haven't got a thought in front of me. Somebody's moved my bits of paper. Um, where we just get really lovely reports um, back from our clients who just say thank you for doing everything. And the whole idea is that the um, you know for you and I is to help people find out what they want. Um, and they don't. Uh, there's you know we all compete against the internet. And who are you going to call when something falls over in Latin America? Um, and it does uh, things. People go on strike. There's a strike coming up in Argentina now. Things that need to be changed, rebooked, and um, 
So we love using these particular operators. We've been with them for 30 years, as in this case, Metropolitan, and they um, they provide excellent service and great guides. Um, would you buy a tour from this person? Trust me, I'm a travel agent. That's a joke. How, to win a prize, how many species of birds were in much at the start? Um, please write to us, the contours, and uh, to give us uh, your answer. Sorry, flicking around. And so that'll, uh, that'll be good. And we win some sort of prize. So thank you very much for listening and your time. This is just one of many products that we have for your clients. And, and there's other alternatives there, of course, also. So I hope you have a nice, uh, nice long weekend because here in Melbourne we've got a holiday tomorrow. May your best team win on the weekend and go the pies, as they say. So, but thank you very much for your time. Um, talk to you in a couple of weeks. Bye.